Bradford Nordine. I'm the creative director of Dirty Looks Incorporated. Um, and we are a platform for queer film, video, and performance. We're really excited to be here because we're going to be doing two different events. Um, well, actually, I already did one today. So we're doing three events while here. Um, we're doing a screening here that's basically a kind of like greatest hit celebrating um, where we've been and what we've done over the first eight years of our organization. And then tomorrow night, we're going to be doing a program of um, queer core historical hardcore movies. So yeah, uh, it's a bit of something new, something old, something borrowed. Um, the borrowed, of course, is G.B. Jones and Scott Trelevin, but super excited to be here. Um, tonight ranges really wildly, um, starting with a 16 millimeter film from 1966 about um, a bunch of gay dudes in the West Village shooting up amphetamines and making out to the Supremes to immediately being followed up by Brontez Purnell talking about, about the opposite, but in a sort of similar way. It's a movie where Brontez recasts himself. He said, I wanted to make an Andy Warhol movie where I played Edie Sedgwick. So that's a little bit of the background for the film that Brontez made on Super 8 millimeter, but we're showing it digitally. Um, in between that and a uh, experimental documentary uh, about Peter Berlin, which closes the program by Mariah Garnett. Um, we have a smattering of works that tackle everything from Liberace to Grinder to Riot Girl culture uh, and poppers. Well, like I said, inside, we've screened from everywhere from like a jerk off buddy booth to MoMA. So there's been a lot, a lot, a lot of spaces. Um, we do a project called Dirty Looks on Location where we celebrate queer history by um, doing a different event every single night of July in a different queer city site. So that ranges everywhere from like, you know, your standard screening space to the most unlikely screenings that you could imagine. We, um, I was talking earlier today and talking about the first year we did an event at the Shake Shack, which now occupies the former site of the Adonis Theater, which was an old porn theater in New York. And for that event, everyone was handed, well, you met with someone one-on-one, -on -one, perhaps to echo the complicitness of uh, public sex, and the spectator was handed an iPad that contained Kurt McDowell's loads. So um, we, you know, we've done that. We've done, yeah, video screenings in the buddy booths. We this summer we did an event in a truck parked outside of a shuttered lesbian bar. This summer we did uh, on location for the first time in Los Angeles after doing it three years in New York, and it was really amazing. Amazing. One of the things that I didn't even really realize when we were starting to do it out there is we brought back lesbian bars. There are no lesbian bars in LA. And we brought back three different bars on three different nights. It was great. It's important for me to showcase trailblazers in a capacity that people always think that I'm, um, I'm a nostalgic person and that nostalgia is something that fuels me. But actually, I'm a really, I'm incredibly couched in present day ideas and present day context. I am I believe that we exist today because of what came before us and the more that we understand what came before us and the more we can incorporate that into why we make the political, aesthetic, emotional decisions that we make today, all the better because then we know we have our arsenal. And we do have our arsenal, especially as queer people. Like. It's all there. But what's kind of scary about the queer community right now is there's a lot of that is getting lost. And so one of the real um, political backbones of why I do Dirty Looks and why I like to travel with it so much is to be able to educate about, you know, it's funny, people ask like, oh my gosh, something like Queer Core as a historic program, but it's like, some of these works are 30 years old now. It is history, and it's history that we need to honor and understand. And we can look at it again now with like a different set of eyes rather than like being in the scene. We can see it as an aesthetic object. My name is Jordan Arsenault, and I'm the coordinator of Media Queer, which is the online home of the queer media database Canada Quebec. We are a project founded by Thomas Waugh that is run out of Montreal to preserve, promote, exhibit and research queer Canadian and Quebecois moving image art. And we've been around since 2015. Tonight, tonight is Dirty Looks Eight Years On, the first of a twinned screenings, tonight at Never Apart and tomorrow night, October 20th at La Lumiere Collective here in Mile X. Media Queer's goal is to keep 
the moving image art that's been made in Canada and Quebec in the imaginations, not only of queer people, but also of anyone who cares about the art form of film, about how film is in a way one of the best records of our consciousness about ourselves as social beings, as dreamers, and also about the social justice struggles that we've had. And so one of the things that's really special about being able to work with Media Queer is, for example, to show a film like Troublemakers by G.B. Jones that you know, really snowballed into so many people uh, inspired by her work, some more famous, some who may, whose names might be more hashtagable, but these are the makers who have made the DNA that we rely on to dream about a more creative, more just world as queer people. And so the example I always take is we're here, we're queer, we're fabulous. An uncannily named documentary by Maureen Bradley and Danielle Como that documents the sex garage uh, riot activism. Sex garage, they call it a riot. Uh, the police raid and the activism that came out of that in 1990. And so that people might hear about in Richard Burnett's annual column that is now his annual Facebook post, but we get to actually bring everyone from college kids to researchers, then the general public to look at this material and look and see that's how that group of queer people dealt with being beaten up, dragged by the hair by cops and having our spaces for our sexual selves and our cultural selves invaded. And so there's a history that's really crucial to preserve.